My plan is to have everybody in Africa drink and clean water. And then you'll stop. <laughs> I'm going to retire and go to a retiring home. Well, 10 years ago, I had the privilege of interviewing a young nine-year-old Ryan Harold Jack. He had just started his foundation, Ryan's Well, and I was an intern at Listen Up Television. Well, 10 years later, Ryan's grown up, and I'd like to think I have too, and we caught up with him here at King's College in Halifax. So, Ryan, what are you studying here at King's? I'm studying political science and international development studies. And why have you chosen those areas of study? I just feel I have a lot of interest in both of them and whether I go with a career or volunteering in my life, I feel like I can derive a lot and give a lot to those things. So it's has, pretty good. Has part of the passion of, you know, wanting to get involved with water issues been <laughs> part of the drive for that? Uh, absolutely. I guess it's just uh, one of the things that water issues has brought me into is uh, just the world itself mm -hmm. and to be part of that world in any kind of way, I would love to. So. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. from, you know, a six-year-old that started a foundation to now 19 years old at, in college and university, things have changed a lot. Things have changed. Things are growing up. I'm growing up sadly too. So yes, you got to roll with them rather than fight the tide. <laughs> I have to work on my essay. Ryan Harold Jack has that. always so gone against the tide. From the time he was six years old and came home concerned about the state of the world's water supply, it has been clear that his outlook on the world was just a little different than the average first graders. It was a grade one school project, uh, a charity project, and my teacher, we were raising money for developing countries, so my teacher brought in this list of things we could save, and it was like one cent was for a pencil, on and on and on, until she got to $70 was for a well. And then she explained to us, yeah, people are dying because they don't have clean water. Ryan took his concern home to his parents in the hopes that they would give him the $70 required. But young Ryan quickly realized it wouldn't be that easy. They looked at me and they're like, oh, that's nice, and went along doing the regular household stuff. And then uh, finally, I made them feel guilty about not helping me. And it got to the point where they basically had to sit me down. They're like, you know, Ryan, $70, quite a bit of money. We can't just give it to you. Like, here's $70, off you go. Mm -hmm. But what we can do is give you a chance to earn it by doing extra chores on top of the chores you already do, then you can earn something called an allowance, and you can raise money that way. So that's how it started. After Ryan learned the well would cost $2,000, not 70, he went straight to work, delivering speeches, throwing fundraisers, anything he could do to make sure a village on the other side of the world had clean drinking water. And out of that determination, Ryan's Well Foundation was born. It's one of the millions of like projects that happen when we're young and naive and just have this ambition to do something just in the world and it's one of the lucky millions that turned out to be something far far bigger. Back in 2005 when I first met the Harold Jack family Ryan's mother Susan explained why they were determined to support their nine-year-old son at the time. He understands that there's a gap and it's important to him now to close that gap, to help do what, what he can, to, uh, to try to close it a little bit, and as Ryan would say, make the world a little bit more equal. How can you argue with that? You know, how can you not support that kind of a, uh, of a dream that he has? Um, I think we'd be remiss not to, to do everything in our power to try to support that and to, to help him make it happen. And they have. This year, Ryan's Well celebrates its 10th anniversary. No longer a school project, they are now working in 16 developing countries, responsible for over 600 projects, and have provided over 700,000 people with clean water. It's an uh, unbelievable experience to see just people want to help themselves. And if you give people water, which I've learned is the most basic necessities of life in a lot of areas, but still not provided on that certain level, you empower people to want to just develop their societies in however they, way they want to feel. And if you give people that opportunity, then you can, good things can happen, and it's unbelievable to see. And he's not the only one watching. Over the years, Ryan's efforts have caught the attention of many notable figures, from Oprah to prime ministers past and present. And with awards and accolades presented to him over the years, he says he's still just a normal kid. Well, I like to think all the awards aren't going towards me. It's going towards the six-year-old me and the foundation that is created because 
I was a regular kid then, and I'm a regular kid now. I like to sleep in on Saturdays. I like to play basketball. I like to play sports. I like, like to play video games. And it's something that I like to consider is one of so many separate school projects, or so many separate any kind of projects. And it's just the one that happened to grow. And it's not my project by any means. It's become so many other people's projects. And his message to the hundreds of kids who hear his story each year? Well, I guess really the message that me and I guess I like to think the foundation is uh, trying to portray is that you don't necessarily have to go out and make a difference. You don't necessarily have to, but if you feel that naive, just wondering, like, why is this wrong with the world? Why, why, why is this happening? And if you care, which I'm pretty sure so many people do, but they don't have the naive first step tendency to take a step towards it and it's just a matter of instilling that like it could be anything in the world it could be environmental issues it could be something with social ju justice it could be any number of things and for me it was water and I felt connected to that and now I'm connected to making a change and leading my life and I feel like that if that's a kind of culture we can instill in not only today's youth but today's society that you know we'll make some strides. Can talk and you can but talk I couldn't you leave our interview without reminding Ryan of something he said to me here. 10 years ago. A drop, if you will, of insight that inspired me. Really, God doesn't make the world perfect. That's why you are here. That He didn't make the world perfect because he wanted you to do something right. He wanted you to fix that because God gave us free will. Do you kind of still have that mindset? I think the underlying tone of what I was trying to say when I was nine is, yeah, but I can do something about it. So that's what I saw when I was nine, so I did. And if you can be that naive and have the, even if it's just a little bit of courage to try to fight the status quo or the norm in a positive regard, and you can find a positive outlet for that, then that's fantastic. And I think I saw that when I was a kid and what I see now. Mm. In Halifax, Nova Scotia, Magdalene John, 100 Huntley Street.